All right, so in this one, we are gonna be using a third party package called Crispy Forms. This is a Django prac package that makes our forms look pretty cool. It's actually a lot better. Um, and I would suggest that if you're gonna use forms, using Crispy Forms would be a really good way to make your project just look nicer. Because if we look back at our homepage, that sign up form here, well, it doesn't look that great. And we could do some custom styling, we could do all sorts of things to it, um, but it wouldn't, wouldn't it be better just to have something that does it automatically for us, especially for Bootstrap. Um, and that's what Crispy Form does. Uh, it uses all sorts of things. It doesn't use just Bootstrap. There are other ways of using Crispy Forms, but there's all kinds of things that just make it look a lot nicer. So if I click on signups, notice it says this field is required. This is confusing a little bit. Which field is it referring to? Now, we know it's referring to the email field, but that could look a little nicer. This button doesn't look like that button. That might want to look a little nicer, but that also isn't completely related to Bootstrap, uh, or excuse me, to Crispy Forms, or the forms themselves. We can change that button, so let's go ahead and change it first. So inside of our home.html, uh, we're gonna go into this button, and we're just gonna add a few classes here. So we'll do class equals to btn, and I'll say btn um, primary. And this button itself, well, you might notice uh, a little correlation to the button above it. So if I refresh into this home page here, we now see that button looks a little bit better. And we could also even add a button dash block, and that becomes a block. Wow, that doesn't look right, so we'll go back. And where this is stuff is coming from is getbootstrap.com inside of CSS, inside of buttons, and we've got all the different attributes on how we can add two buttons, right? So button uh, primary, that's the one we went with, and that's that one. And you can see all the different things that you can add. Notice most of them are for classes, btn large, btn small, that's related to that stuff, btn block, that's the one we just added, all types of things you can do. Uh, you can play around with this. It's fairly straightforward on how a lot of it works. Um, active, you might not want to use, but certain things you can you can definitely kind of play around with yourself um, at this point. All right, so now we go back into MVP landing. Let's go ahead and add in Django Crispy Forms. So like any documentation, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you go in here and go to installation. So whatever Django project you are gonna end up using, uh, if you end up using third party stuff, you're gonna to wanna to come in and make sure that you can go through the installation fairly straightforward. This is a very straightforward installation right here. But there's another thing that you might wanna check out is you might wanna look at the code itself to ensure that it's still being used, right? So that's another thing that's important. So we can actually take a look at it itself. Notice the link at the very bottom. So down here, it'll show the link. The link itself is gonna show up there. I'm not signed in, so it's not gonna make it star it for me. But now I can see the code and we see the most recent update was 19 days ago. Um, and there's other ones that are a lot longer than that, but that doesn't really matter. The main code itself was 19 days ago. So there's a good chance this is used a lot. And it's starred a lot. Um, so that also is a really good sign that it's also being used a lot. A lot of times in the documentation, if it does, if it's no longer being used, it will um, actually say so. And then it might give you a link to another one that is updating it or forked it or whatever. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you're using third party stuff. The other side of it is since it is open source, we can actually look through their code. Um, not necessarily the commit, but the code itself. We can actually go through this code. So if we wanted to update it, that's how you would do it. You would be able to actually download and update this code if something's not working as expected. Um, so that's something to think about as well. But for us, we are gonna go ahead and assume that Django Crispy Forms is up to date and it is working based on all the things we just saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this pip install and I'm gonna come into my virtual environment, close out the server. And if you remember back when we did Django, when we installed Django, we did pip install Django. So we have not Django installed, so let's go ahead and install Crispy Forms. So the dash upgrade is just upgrading Crispy Forms for us uh, if it's already installed. Um, so this is like as if another 
package or something installed it. But for us, this is how we did it. So if we do pip freeze again, we now see that Django Crispy Forms is installed. Perfect. That's good. That's what we want to see. And that's what we want to use. All right. So now that we've got installed, let's go ahead and run the server again. Or actually, we can leave the server off. We can go to the next part of the settings is we see add crispy forms, crispy underscore forms into settings into our installed app. So we can copy this, go into settings.py and scroll up to installed apps. What I do is I put the Django apps first, third party apps second, and then my apps last. So I'll just make a note here, third party apps, and then my apps. And of course, Django apps, the top. Uh, in some cases, it might tell you to have um, the app, well, probably not with apps, but in some cases you might have your Django, uh, this order a little different, but I like to keep it like this so it's nice and organized and also keep it in alphabetical order. Now, of course, Django apps, um, the first part of it doesn't really matter. It's more of the second part, right, or the last part of it, the app itself, the name of the app itself. So if we had another app come in here called, um, let's say, for instance, Django Registration Redux, which we're not going to talk about yet, but Django registration Redux, we would not put that before Crispy Forms, right? We would put it after. That's an example of that. Okay, um, so now that we've got Crispy Forms, what do we do? Well, Python manage.py, and we can do make migrations. Python, no, no changes detected. So whenever we do anything into installed apps, by default, you can do make migrations. But if you do a third-party um, app like what we're doing here, all we have to do, really do is migrate. And notice it says synchronized unmigrated apps, which is Crispy Forms. So now we have Crispy Forms installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the server again and leave that running. So let's go back down. There's a couple things that I do wanna say is the Crispy template pack. Notice the different document or the different um, uh, frameworks that it's using. So we've got old Bootstrap, so Bootstrap 2 is what it's called. That one is old. I believe Bootstrap no longer uh, supports it. Bootstrap 3, which is the version that we've been using to double check it. Let's just double check by going to the homepage. It says currently 3.3.4. And all of that would also be in the code itself or at the very bottom. And then version 2 is this one. So if you see of older videos or something like that, this is this is version 2. It's You will see other sites still using version 2. But as it says, the docs are no longer officially supported. That doesn't mean that version two doesn't work. It still works, it's just not being supported anymore. Uh, so you could use version two, it's just gonna be quite a bit different um, for us in these videos. So version three is made better for mobile two, and it's faster. There's a lot of reasons why you'd use version three. But anyway, so back to the installation. So those are the different ones, or you could use a uniform. So the crispy form um, template pack that is already built in with it. Uh, but we want to change it. So we want to have Bootstrap 3. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and go into our settings. And I'm going to put it um, down at the bottom near static files. So template, template, crispy template pack, Bootstrap 3. All right. So now that we've got that, we have uh, a few other ways on how we can actually run this. So I'm going to just kind of ignore what their stuff is because it's getting, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated than it really needs to be, in my opinion. Uh, for those of you guys who made it, it's awesome. I love this this uh, third-party library, but I mean, the documentation I think could be a little bit more straightforward for beginners. Okay, so um, what we really want here is just to load crispy forms tags. So if you remember these load tags or these curly brackets and the percent, that has to do with our templates, right? Um, so that's what we wanna use. So let's go ahead and grab this. And we're going to go into our template where we want to use crispy forms. So it's going to be for forms. So when we load template tags, we want to put them near the top, but not at the top if extends is there. It will be right below the top if extends is there. Otherwise, you want to keep them up there. It's best practice to put what you load at the top, whether it's in a Django or excuse me, a Python file itself or in a template file. Put that at the top. Uh, the one exception is the inheritance in the template tags. Okay, so load crispy form tags. Now, if we go down to this form, remember this as p rendered it out as a paragraph. Now we want to re render it out as a crispy form tag. So we just do crispy here. And now I can go back into our homepage, do a refresh, and voila, it is a lot different. It's now a block, which is okay. If I hit sign up, now it's making this field is required. Oh, it looks so much better, like a hundred times better, at least a hundred. 
if not way more than that, because it also made it red. It, it showed a real validation. Like this is what a form and what users kind of expect in this day and age is something a little bit more along these lines. Of course, there could be a lot of other kind of dynamic things and stuff like that, but um, this is a very easy way to get this stuff going. Notice we didn't code CSS, HTML, or JavaScript at all here. We just used this third-party library and it was super fast. Um, cool, so what that means is we need to update this form a little bit because uh, I don't want it to go all the way across. This is kind of awkward, right? So using Bootstrap's block, um, using Bootstrap's scaffolding, that is, uh, we, we're going to take a look at this. So their grid system, if we go in here, uh, we're going to scroll down to this, this field right here, or the example stacked horizontal. Um, and I'm going to do just a quick lesson in Bootstrap. So what Bootstrap does is it, it separates your entire page into 12 columns. So consider where my mouse is, one column, two columns, three columns, and then so on, all the way down. This is kind of a, an example of that. So since it separates it out into 12 columns, that means you can have any element be a certain width of this column. Um, so try and think of it as, as like, let's look at our page. Right now it is 12 columns wide. Now, if I'm looking at this, just, just in my gut feeling, how it was before is, is probably around here, right? So if I do a quick glance at this, it's gonna be like, this is gonna be one block, this will be one block, this will be one block, and then this will be one block. So it, it's kind of like four, it's about four columns wide, would be my guess is how big I want it to be, just by glancing at it. I mean, I already know, but just because of enough experience, but just by glancing at it, it's gonna be about four. I want it to be about four wide. So how do I do that? Um, looking at the CSS itself, if we look in here, we've got column MD1. So column MD1, I'll explain what that means in just a second, but we also have this row. We have a row and then a column, row and columns. That's kind of how it works. And notice they all add up to 12 uh, for this nice smooth look, the smooth transition. You want them to add up to 12. So let's go ahead and grab this row and then we'll do that first column here. And I'm gonna put this entire block, title and everything into this. So I'm gonna tab all this stuff in. And just like in, in uh, the blocks, you, whatever you open, you must close. So we have two open div tags that we have not closed yet. So let's close those off. And Sublime Text is actually fairly smart and a lot of times will tell me how to close them off. But it's actually inaccurate. This one is closed off right here. So I only needed one down here. All right, so let's move this back. So that's closing that, perfect. All right, so now let's go ahead and put this div tag for the MD1 down here. And let's go back in, refresh. Let's refresh the page, we don't need to resubmit the form. And notice it's now very thin, right? So it's only, it's only small, it's this column medium one. It's only one wide. So we can play around with this and we can say two wide. And then we can say three wide. And then we can say four wide, right? We can keep going. Well, let's go back to three wide. All right, so if it's three columns wide, so it's three columns wide right here. So what that means is this is three. The next one could in theory be three. The next one after, after that could be three and then so on. Well, instead of talking about it, let's actually see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it in one, two, three more times. So 12 is divided by three, four times. So now we have four. And that's kind of my gut feeling as to what it would have been. And now it's actually coming across and it looks fairly decent. Granted, uh, if we click on it, it is the same form. So the same error is gonna be rendered all throughout. Uh, but we do see that four was the right size um, as far as splitting up the scaffolding. Okay, so let's get rid of all these other ones because we don't need that. It's just an example. So now we refresh in here. And now we can talk really quickly about medium. We are gonna come back to this, uh, this concept a little bit more, but I just wanted to show you while we're still talking about this form. So we come in here and if I change the size of the browser, eventually medium becomes full again, right? So that's where the size is. It's basically saying the minimum amount it can be as three, as a column of three. So if I added another another class to this and said column small six, then the medium amount it would be, so when I come down to being small, instead of going all the way across, as you see, it's only half. 
And then when I go any smaller than that, it goes all the way across again. So this is going to take some playing around with, but we can keep it three all across the board. So if we wanted it to be column small, if we wanted it to be only a fourth of the page all across the board, we would say extra small. So no matter what, if it gets really small, it's going to be three across or four could fit four columns could fit there basically. Uh, but I think small three is probably going to be the best bet for us. Nope, not even small three. So small three is there. So we, we want to go back actually to let's say small six and column small uh, medium three. We'll leave it as that. And that is kind of how we're going to leave that. So then now if it's a small uh, dot or it's a small device, the form itself goes 12 long and it, it then is a little bit better for what a mobile device would be. But luckily, the Django Crispy Form library allows this stuff to happen. It happens easily and simply. All right, so that's it for Django Crispy Forms um, and a little bit of bootstrap stuff. And the next one, we are going to be definitely cleaning this stuff up a little bit more and actually do some customization to our CSS here. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.